Well, the calendar has fully moved into the month of May. What does the weather forecast look like for our first full week of the new month? Are we seeing planting windows open up? And are we going to see a reprieve from some of the heavy rain in the southern plains in particular? Let's talk about it. Joining us for our weekly weather conversation, Eric Snodgrass with Nutrient Ag Solutions. And Eric, hope you had a great weekend. Set this up for us because I know I've seen the pictures on social media. A lot of heavy rain in parts of Oklahoma and Texas. It yeah. was a cold and wet weekend in the east. I mean, walk us through what we saw this weekend and what does that, you know, what does that mean for the next couple of days ahead? Yeah, well, I'll tell you, I didn't have a good weekend. It was terrible. I was stuck underneath one of those big cutoff lows in uh, East Central Illinois, and I was at a weekend soccer tournament. And I'll be honest, I broke out my winter parka because we had 25 mile an hour winds. It was raining and uh, the temperatures barely got out of the mid 40s. And we didn't get a frost because it was windy and cloud cover. So the overnight lows weren't much different from the daytime highs. But you go just west of there, temperatures are in the 67. I mean, Montana, eastern Montana yesterday on Sunday hit 90. So this is what happens. And you're right. Down in the southern plains, there's another cutoff low that's going to actually move through that area. We've had parts of Oklahoma and Texas already in the last month get 15 inches of rain. This is going to slide through and hit them again. There's been a lot of destroyed winter wheat acres. The spring crops, the summer crops, they've been impacted negatively as well. We're not even getting a lot of the cotton crop established and going because of this. And uh, that low, it's got one benefit. It is going to sneak into the southeast, getting some rain into some dry pockets there. But where did it not hit? So I just told you we soaked the eastern Corn Belt, but you've got parts of Nebraska, the Dakotas, western Iowa. There's even sections of Minnesota and Wisconsin that are very, very dry. So it, it comes back to that narrative on precipitation disparity this spring. And the folks that have had too much are like, just give it to, give it away. Can, can someone come take this? And you got the folks that have not had enough. And they're like, yeah, we'll take anything you got. So um, how long does it continue, Jesse? And is it something where we walk into a summer time frame where the disparity is hitting, you know, key acres. That's going to be the question as we go forward, because we've now got some answers on intended planting acres. We've seen how harvest progress is going. Uh, and we want to know answers to those questions. Well, before we get into forecasting you know, a little bit more for this week and, and a little longer term, you, you shared with me some interesting new data. As yeah. Let's talk about this. A lot of times, uh, folks in, in you know meteorology, you uh, you know use different models. The GFS and the European model are two of the the big ones that we hear a lot about. Uh, walk us through maybe some disparities between the uh, what what exactly is going on here eric yeah yeah first of all i i need to let everybody know this this is the, this is a um what we call a, a a skill score that's the easiest way to think about it and this map is made by a good friend and colleague of mine dr ryan maui brilliant young scientist really respect his work so i appreciate him letting me show you this we got three different models you have the european flagship model in blue OK, you have the AIFS, that's the European Artificial Intelligence in black. But that other line is the U.S. flagship model, uh, and that is the GFS. And if you look, starting around mid-April, the GFS skill scores have gone down on the graph. And there's some concern because this happened to coincide with the same time we started to hear about NOAA funding cuts. We've watched the weather balloon launches uh, decrease in their frequency. And we've also seen some issues here with the ability to do our, our data assimilation technique, which is while we're running the model, how it's able to ingest data. That, that has been compromised. And our flagship model is good. NOAA's GFS is a respectable model. And I, I, I am without it, um, it removes some of my forecasting skills. So I'm, I'm quite concerned over this and trying to pinpoint the reasons behind it. But its skill score recently has been below 80 percent. It's normally like 92, 93 percent, maybe 94 percent. So these drops have been quite concerning. Um, now, here's another thing to think about. Those NOAA data cutouts and losses that have been largely happening because of, I mean, massive changes in the U.S. government. I mean, we can't. Mm -hmm. There's no reason to make it anything other than it is. Those changes will affect global models as well. So you're not going to be. So the European model relies on our data input to run. We rely on theirs. And you will not let this will not be saved by the artificial intelligence, because when you initialize the artificial intelligence, you initialize it every day, in fact, four times a day with uh, the current observations. And then it searches history, what the model's trained on to produce the forecast. 
So the loss of these data centers, the loss of the, the, the weather balloon launches um, could have a massive impact on our predictive skill going into a critical season, knowing what we know about how 2025 hangs in the balance. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm worried about it, Jesse, because mm -hmm. it's my lifeblood, right? The access yeah. to these models and interpreting, that's something to think about. And we're right now seeing the, the effects of it. You asked us two weeks ago if I would have been predicting flooding into Louisiana, Mississippi. No, I knew it was wet in southern parts of, 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 of the southern plains. But how, this 12-day window that's going to open in the Midwest for rapid planting, whew, you know, we knew that we were going to see windows, but this is going to be wide open. You're going to get folks saying, well, when's the rain going to come back? Is it Thursday after next that we get our next chance of getting some moisture back into the Western Plains? Because we're going to love the wide open windows. Mm -hmm. until we need the rain again. And we're going to need it pretty quickly, especially as these temperatures start to ramp back up. I've got most of Iowa getting over 250 GDDs in the next uh, 12 to 15 days too. So this crop's going to explode and it's going to need some water. And we're going to need these models to help us predict when that rain's going to return. So long story short, Jesse, I'm concerned over this. We need to continue to investigate what's going on, but it's something that could be a major, major issue going into this 2025 growing season. That's a it's a great thing you bring up, and it might make the job of forecasting a, a little bit harder yet. Let's talk forecast though here short term this week. You know, looking at some of these planting windows open up, more rain for the south. What do you see in here short term this week, Eric? Yeah, so we have one cutoff low moving into the northeast. It's still going to hit parts of the eastern Corn Belt with more rain today, tomorrow. Then you have the next low that goes farther to the south. But as you can see here, next six, seven days, big, wide open for much of the heart of the Corn Belt, uh, you know, wide open planting windows. But, you know, something you said a moment ago, Jesse, just had me thinking, right? If we lose reliable weather forecasts, ones that are consistent, ones that um, offer unbiased view of the weather. That's why we like the models. Guess what that leaves room for? I mean, that leaves room for the snake oil salesman to come in and tell you, oh, no, 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 I've got the new best thing on predicting weather. And guess what? They produce a forecast, you pay for it, then they blow town, right? And so I'm worried about all of the, the pseudoscience that's going to come in in terms of weather forecasting if we lose the skill from some of these other, you know, just outstanding weather forecast models. So just thinking hard on this today, Jesse, but there you go. That, you can see it right there. Windows are going to open up. Well, thinking a little bit longer term, uh, a few more maps to take a look at on our video feed. And uh, you just shared these with us here this morning. Walk us through, and this kind of goes, I think, with the same narrative that you and I have been talking about for a while here is that there is some concern about what summer could look like in parts of, say, the Western Corn Belt in particular. Absolutely. So this map is uh, from the European seasonal weather forecast model. It's released on the 5th of every month. And so we just got it today. Uh, actually, just before you and I started talking. Now, the map is made by Weatherbell. So I just want to make sure I give credit for who made the map. Uh, but as you look at it, this is the temperature forecast. And it is an anomaly. And what you do with this is you don't read the amount. You don't do that. Don't look at it and go, OK, Kansas City is. No, you just look at the pattern. And this is suggesting a lot of central U.S. anomalously warm summer conditions. Now, if you would, go to the one on precipitation, because this is where the new model trend just went much drier in parts of Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, sections of northern Illinois, Minnesota, Nebraska. Nebraska is already way behind on its moisture. And so this is a very, very concerning map suggesting that West of the Mississippi, which is what our narrative has been, higher pressure and the risk of drought developing. So the model didn't break away from that narrative. Now, remember, this is this is this, this map doesn't even start for another 30 days. Right. So we're, we're June, July and August. And it's just to make a point that we're continuing to watch the ocean temperatures of the North Pacific. We have the fading La Nina that's out, but the neutral conditions are of concern and the cold water off the Baja. These are all preseason signals for the risk of drought where you see it on this map. The other part of this is where do we currently have our soil moisture deficits? It's those same states I've been talking about that are struggling with moisture. So we've not taken that off the table despite all of the discussion and talk about flooding that's happening in New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, and the rest of the South. So just another point of reference, something to watch out for here, but that's what we've got. Any other final thoughts you'd share with us here this week, Eric? Yeah, Brazilian monsoon is done, which this is a typical time for it. I checked NDVI values last week on the Safrina crop. It looks fantastic. Uh, and it's trying to rain in southern Brazil a little bit, which they need it pretty badly. So did northern Argentina. 
A little cold going into the Black Sea. I saw that temperatures over the next 10 days are going to be easily dipping into the mid-30s. We might have a frost problem there. Um, I'm not confident on it, but it's something to be considering. Uh, but other than that, I think that's really our only major, major global story right now. All right, folks can go to agweather.com for more information, ag-wx.com. With that, Eric Snodgrass, Nutrient Ag Solutions. Good to hear from you again this week, my friend. Have a good one. We'll talk to you next week. Yeah, well, you can go to agweather.com as long as Noah's still funded, because if it's gone, then that site will be gone too. So just, I'm sorry, man, but I got to go to bat for my friends, right? This is just this is my lifeblood here. So anyways, yeah, go to the website. It's a great place to get info. Information. Absolutely. Again, agweather.com for more. Eric, good to talk with you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jesse.